We men and women are all in the same boat, upon a stormy sea. We owe to each other a terrible and tragic loyalty. Terrible and tragic loyalty is a curious turn of phrase, and one that's very interesting to unpack. On some level, tragic loyalty must be a prioritisation of something outside of ourselves, where our obligation towards it demands we make a great sacrifice at our own expense. We can think of many occasions, fictitious and actual, where people have been compelled by such a thing. For instance, we may recall Edward Smith, the stoic captain of the ill-fated RMS Titanic, whose tragic loyalty to his post bade him stay and go down with his ship instead of trying to escape. Or perhaps we can think of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, star-crossed lovers so dedicated to each other they would rather take their own lives than live without the other. Whatever a tragic loyalty might entail, there is something oddly haunting about the notion of loyalty in the face of personal interest. Maybe it speaks of an understanding of our place amongst others, or maybe it's just a virtue pursued to the point of excess. On this topic, there was a true story which provides some interesting insight. The tale begins in Japan, around the start of the Edo period, and centres around a nobleman called Onodora Yoshimichi, who was a daimyo of the Dewa province. What's a daimyo, you may ask? Well, it's essentially a feudal lord. As such, he was responsible for the administration of his territories and, as the land's ruler de jour, the immediate management of its retainers. As the daimyo, he also resided over Omori Castle, his family's han or estate, tied to which there were the Onodera samurai. Around this time, samurai functioned almost as a family guard, if you will, a private force of terrible loyalty to their daimyo employed to protect the han and honour their charge. It is worth noting that for the samurai, this was not just their job, but also their calling. To lose this would be akin to losing one's purpose and identity. Remember this detail, it's important. Where was I? Oh yes, turns out Yoshimichi didn't do a great job of ruling the province. In 1594, for example, on the dubious advice of Megami Yoshiaki, he accused and punished one of his most loyal retainers for sedition. His harsh treatment of the wrongdoing wrought discontent and division amongst his other subjects. Yoshimichi, possibly wanting to offset the blame, accused Yoshiaki of deceiving him, which in turn reignited old hostilities with the Megami clan. Tensions escalated, Omori Castle was besieged, and Yoshimichi, as a result, had no choice but to join the ongoing political wars in the region. This all came to a climax on October 21st, 1600, where Yoshimichi led his samurai against Tokugawa at what would later be known as the Battle of Sekigahara, a crucial turning point in Japanese history. I know, by the way, that there's a lot of names being mentioned, which for some sound quite similar to each other, but all you need to remember going forwards is that our protagonist up to this point, Yoshimichi, ended up losing the battle. As a result, he was stripped of his lands and exiled to the Shukugo region in 1601. So Yoshimichi is kicked out, and his enemy, Tokugawa, establishes the modestly named Tokugawa Shogunate, which would dominate Japan for over 250 years. In the meantime, Yoshimichi's hand was extinguished, as it said, meaning that the estate was dissolved and no longer recognised as a seat of power. Doing this, to think of it in modern terms, essentially made all its samurai unemployed, forcing them to become ronin, wandering samurai without masters or purpose. To add salt to the wound, the Onodera clan territories were given to the rival Satake clan. When the new Satake daimyo showed up, Satake Yoshinobu, he decided not to use Omori Castle as his hand, and instead settled in the Rokugo Fortress. However, big problem, 1,000 ronin loyal to the Onodera clan, who had been samurai to Yoshimichi, decided that now was the time to act on their discontent, and they violently rebelled against the new daimyo and the Tokugawa shogunate. The townspeople unfortunately rallied to the aid of Yoshinobu, and when Satake reinforcements arrived, the 1,000 ronin were completely surrounded. Their katanas hacking away with impressive precision, the ronin fell all those who dared near them. But even as trained as they were, they eventually came to the realisation that the odds were against them. Most people might have surrendered here, but the samurai philosophy urges its adherence towards Bushido. Bushido, writes the Book of the Samurai, is realised in the presence of death. This means choosing death whenever there is a choice between life and death. There is no other reasoning. Honouring this, the ronin kept fighting, 
for their XL daimyo and, by extension, for their identity in life and as samurai. As they fought, their ranks getting ever thinner, they knew they had earned a good death, and had remained loyal to the Anodera clan, and, more importantly, to themselves. The fighting continued until, in the end, the Ronin were no more. Commenting on this event centuries later, historian Stephen Turnbull says, No Tokugawa samurai in Japanese history ever expressed their loyalty to their distant lord in such a dramatic fashion. The terrible and tragic loyalty of before appears to be present, here exemplified by the sacrifice of the Ronin, a sacrifice for a life's philosophy and a purpose. Although on face value a final suicide gesture, this act of rebellion demonstrates their integrity as samurai and broadly, the fight to preserve one's identity. Irrespective of the utility of their actions, none can deny that the 1,000 Ronin of the Rokugo Rebellion were true warriors and men of loyalty. If nothing else, their sacrifice makes for interesting history. I chose this event to cover in this video, mainly because it's a good story, but secondly because the number 1,000 just so happens to be of great importance to the channel. That's because, as of a few days ago, we passed the exciting milestone of over 1,000 subscribers. So thank you to everyone who has supported and continues to support the Polymus Paradise, whether that be through liking, sharing or just viewing our videos. We started this project seriously at least pretty much a year ago, so we're routinely taken aback by how far we've come since then and your responses to our videos. It's absolutely amazing, so a massive thank you to all our subscribers, we endlessly appreciate your loyalty to the channel. Not loyalty to the extent of a bloody last stand hopefully, uh, unless you're a samurai and into that I suppose, but a loyalty that's invaluable and that we certainly thank you for. If you're watching this and haven't already subscribed, please consider doing so, here's to the next thousand. And I've linked some other videos here to check out, hopefully you'll find some interesting. Remember to hit that notification bell so that you'll know whenever we release a new new content. And if you enjoyed this short video on the Rocky Go Rebellion, why not give it a like or a comment? Perhaps both if you're feeling adventurous. I think that's it for now. Again, thank you for watching and for supporting this channel.